Hi, I'm Rich Ferguson, poker player, magic and gambling consultant, and world-class magician. On this DVD, you're going to learn many of the chip tricks you've seen on TV or in person. No longer will you wonder, how are these techniques done? With patience, practice, and the secrets on this DVD, you'll be looking like a pro soon. Chip tricks help pass the time, impress your friends, and most importantly, intimidate your opponents. To practice the techniques in this DVD, you're going to need a soft surface to work on. If you don't have a felt table at home, you, you could possibly use a mouse pad. You're also going to need uh, tin poker chips and a deck of cards. Well, enough talk. Navigate yourself through the DVD and start looking like a pro today. This is called the shuffle. When doing the chip shuffle, there's two things you want to keep in mind. The softer the surface you have, the better, and it helps if you have two different colored stack of chips. To successfully do a chip shuffle, you're going to first learn a move called the pullover. Now, the pullover is very simple. It's simply just taking some of the chips, putting them to the side, and then lifting up the rest and putting them back on top. It's like cutting the deck. So it doesn't really matter how many you take. In this case, we're shooting for half, and having the two different colors helps you determine that. So pull them over with your thumb and middle finger, drop them, and then with your thumb and your other two, uh, your weaker fingers, we call them, pick them up and put them back on top. So you're going to alternate between fingers. Start with the first three, and then pick up with the, your pinky and your ring finger. That's the techniques you want to get through because those are the fingers that are going to enable you to do the shuffle. To do the complete chip shuffle, you're going to start off by doing the pullover like before, but the back chips aren't going to go to the top. They're going to be held in the pullover position, just butted up next to the other stack of chips. The front two fingers that are free are just going to trap the chips from going anywhere, so this can move as one solid block. You're going to apply pressure together. All your fingers are going to kind of go like this. It's really a feel you're going to have to develop, but all the fingers kind of slightly squeeze together. And at the same time, this back stack right here is lifted up on an angle, a slight tilt, a very, very slight tilt. You could do that with your ring finger and your thumb, just a slight tilt. As you push all the chips together, you squeeze and you do the tilt, they will all rise up and start to interweave. And as they interweave, all fingers leave the table and rise up into the air. I'm doing this very, very slowly so you can try to visualize what's going on. All the fingers are going to squeeze together. You're going to do a tilt with the back fingers, and then all the fingers go up. If I had a very large stack, it would look like this. I'll do this very slow so you can see it. I'm squeezing all my fingers together. The back ones are trapped like this. The front two are blocked off. You do a slight tilt. The chips start to intermix, and you lift your fingers up. At full speed, it would look like this. One final tip about chip shuffling. I would recommend starting off for your first time with about six chips and adding chips as you get better. This is called a butterfly, and in magic it's called a coin star. To do the coin star, you're going to need four chips. I would highly recommend two chips of one color and two chips of another so you can keep track in your hands of what's going on. I'd also consider this to be a very difficult move to do. Okay. You're going to grab the chips like this from opposite ends with the middle finger and thumb. You're going to hold this pretty firmly. The other two fingers are going to trap it along the other two sides. They should be able to hold it independently as well. Pretty equal around. The thumb is going to come up to the side and try to remove just two chips. But we're going to do this in a pretty interesting way. Thumb slides forward. It overtakes this finger. This finger releases for a moment, so you can take just two chips. You're just going to kind of do this with the edge of the thumb. Slide that out from underneath. This finger takes back the position on top of this chip. So you have kind of like a triangle right here. The thumb continues to slide back as these two fingers apply equal pressure across the middle, separating the two sets of chips. Then your pinky moves into position to overtake this chip. So you have these two fingers helping to support the front chip, these two fingers helping to support the back chips, and these two holding the back two chips. Now, at this point, two things are going to happen 
simultaneously. So I'm going to remove one of the stacks of chips just to make this easier for you to follow, and we'll come back to it in a minute. These front two chips are going to separate. They're going to separate because these two fingers are going to move apart. This back chip, because of the angle of this finger, is riding more on this finger than the front chip is. So when you separate, this chip's going to follow. So if you don't mind, try just doing this part. We're going to get rid of these two top chips just to make it easier for a moment. The thumb is actually going to sneak down to the pinky as far as it can go and clip the edge of this back chip right here with the edge of your thumb. And you can pull this chip free like this. So now the thumb and the first finger have this chip, and the ring and the pinky have that chip completely separate. So these two chips are going to be moved apart like so. Before you had two chips here, now you have two here. So doing it all together, it would look like this. You're going to separate them, get them back to this position with one finger on top, two here, and two at the bottom. And you're going to do the thumb move and get ready to separate these two almost simultaneously. The thumb will be the first thing to happen. The thumb's going to come down, start to remove this chip, and as it removes, the top and the middle fingers go apart at the exact same time. Once again, we'll do this a little bit slower. Pull back with the thumb, trap all the chips, the thumb moves down, these two slip apart at the same time to separate all the chips. This is what it would look like at a more normal speed. One more tip on the butterfly. When you start off, there is a fair amount of pressure, but once you get to the point where the chips are separated, it's very, very light. There's a couple flourishes I'd like to show you using the butterfly. Once you get the butterfly down, just collapse all your fingers at the same time and have all the chips stuck between your knuckles. Now from this position, if you open up your fingers slowly, you can have a chip on top of every finger. It's hard to do very, very slowly like this, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just showing you. This is called anti-gravity, and in magic it's called the muscle pass. The muscle pass is done by getting used to having chips in your hands like this and palming it. This is a technique used in magic, coin magic specifically. This is done by taking a chip, placing it on your middle finger, and pivoting it up into your palm. Now the meaty tissue here and over here, when, they, when your fingers squeeze together like this, form a, an area that can hold a coin or a poker chip. It doesn't take a lot of pressure at all. A lot of people squeeze really hard and you get this really distorted hand look. You're going to have that at the beginning. It's going to look a little bit like this, but after a while, it'll start to look really natural. So just practice by placing a chip here and squeezing and just holding it. Just find the spot in your hand that seems to hold it the best. And this tissue right here is what's going to come across and squeeze, about like that. You don't have to squeeze too hard. Now the way the pass, the muscle pass, or the anti-gravity move is created is by holding your hand like this for the, for the palm, but squeezing really hard. So you hold it there lightly to hold the coin, but then if you squeeze too hard, the coin shoots across. So in magic, I shoot it across to have a coin go from one hand to another without being caught. But in the anti-gravity maneuver, it's the same thing. You're going to hold it here, and you're going to squeeze, and the coin goes up. There's really not much else to explain with this maneuver. It's more of a touch that you're going to develop. Um, once again, just hold it by the fingertips, bring it up into the hand, like this, and squeeze pretty tight so you have a nice firm grip of it. And then your hand should be able to stay. And then to let go of the chip, you just squeeze really hard, and then it goes. This is called the twirl. To do the chip trick, you're going to hold the chips 
like this to begin with to pick them up. The pinky's not used in this effect at all. The ring finger is going to go almost directly across from your middle finger, and your thumb is going to meet the ring finger. So basically, the spot between the thumb and the ring finger is dead center across from the middle finger. That's position in holding the chips. Now, the object here is to get this middle chip out. The thumb is going to just kind of stroke the center of the chips until you can dislodge this middle chip. This middle chip is going to come out. It's going to meet the first finger. The first finger is actually going to pivot this chip between these two fingers. And then it helps guide it back in. This is actually a fairly easy tri chip trick to do. The hardest part is originally just getting the fingers used to holding chips like this and then removing that center chip. This is called the chip twirl reversed. The twirl reversed is a little more challenging. This is how you do it. You're going to hold the chips exactly like you would in the twirl, but instead of the finger the thumb here sneaking out the center chip, you're actually going to try to grab the outside tooth. And this doesn't seem possible, but if you actually kind of dislodge this back one and then dislodge the front one, you'll get a knack of kind of doing that simultaneously and instantly. Meanwhile, the flesh of this middle finger is going to remove the bottom one. So you can almost think of it as one of two things, removing two to the top or removing the middle one down. Either way, you're going to remove this middle chip from the top two as before, but instead of going up, you're going to go down. From this down position, this chip is going to be rotated by the middle finger. And then it's going to be placed back up inside the top chips. So it's just like before, grabbing the middle chip to come up for the twirl. With the twirl reversed, you're actually just removing that chip down. That's all there is to it. This is called front to back. The front to back or the front to back flip is one of the easiest chip tricks to do. Hold the chips in a position where your middle finger and thumb are containing all the chips. Your ring finger is going to attach itself to the bottom and your index finger is going to come in for just some basic support. Your thumb will move forward and remove all the chips except for the front chip. The thumb's actually only going to pull back just a slight amount, about a third to a half of a chip's distance. That leaves this chip kind of floating in the front all by itself. The middle finger is actually just going to pull it flat against the edge of these chips and then to the back. I'll show you one more time from this angle. The thumb simply comes forward, pulls back all the chips except for the front chip. This one's sitting here all by itself. The ring finger grabs it and puts it to the back. The first finger at times can help guide it. An additional variation to the front to back flip is the thumb flip. You're going to hold the chips in a similar position, but instead of removing the back three chips and flipping the front one to the back, the thumb is going to come to the front, remove the front one, and flip it to the back. This is called the knuckle roll. In magic, it's sometimes called the coin roll. There's not a lot to explain with the coin roll. It's more of a knack than anything else, but this is the basic handling. Place a chip on your thumb. You place it onto your first finger by driving it up the side of your finger. The idea is to get it to balance there. The next finger actually goes up and clips that chip. It's not a thing where it just kind of falls. You literally have the next finger consecutively grab 
the coin. When you flip it up to this first finger, it does overhang a bit. If you have a very small hand, a poker chip might actually be too big for you. This next finger grabs it, flips it over. The next finger grabs it, flips it over. The next finger is prepared to receive it. And it doesn't, does not flip over the pinky. You actually turn your hand down a little bit. This chip is then received underneath by the thumb, which slides it along all the fingers. Back to the front again. Now when I do this with uh, silver dollars, I go so fast that underneath, when I get to the pinky, I literally toss from here to here, and it goes all the way across in midair to here, and I catch it to get the speed up very, very fast. One other thing to note on this effect is right at the pinky, you don't go over the pinky. That's where a lot of people get confused. You don't continue going over. You just kind of let it pivot onto the edge of the pinky, which is bent a little bit to receive it. And then the thumb goes underneath and receives it. Once you get really, really fast at it, there's a point between the pinky and the thumb where they actually don't even touch. The chip's just kind of tossed. That's basically all there is to it. It's really a knack that you need to develop, but this is one of the coolest things you could do at a poker table. There's a couple advanced techniques I would like to show you with the coin roll or the knuckle roll. I showed you before how to go forwards. Now I want to give you the basic understanding of how to go backwards. What I would recommend is actually starting going forward on the top of the hand. Instead of going underneath at the end with your pinky, stop at the pinky and then turn your hand back the other way and go backwards. It's the same thing as before. Each finger is going to retrieve and grab the chip. So you can go part way and back, all the way down and back. And then when you go around, going backwards from the very beginning is very difficult. From the thumb, into the pinky is the challenging spot. You can do the same thing you did before. You're going to slide the chip underneath. You're going to literally stick it up through between the back two fingers to start the process. That's actually the spot that's going to give you most trouble. But actually, once you get it down, it's really fun to have both hands simultaneously be able to go forwards and backwards. And as an additional bonus, once you, once you get good with one hand, I recommend starting with the other hand too, which is very fun. And lastly, to really challenge yourself, do multiple chips. This is called coin rolling. Coin rolling, not to be confused with the coin roll, is very, very easy to do. Let me show you how you do it. To hold the chips properly in coin rolling, hold the chips like this, the thumb on one end and the first and middle fingers on the other side, supporting the chips as a block. Start by practicing dropping one chip at a time from the front and letting them drop to the table. The timing of this is what makes the coin roll across the table look cool. Just one at a time until you can get it down to a speed like that, one right after the other. That's essentially all there is to this. It's just an act of developing the speed and the timing. You're going to hold the, the coins like this in your hand with these fingers all lined up as kind of a ramp. When you release one coin, it's going to roll down the table, one right after the next. If you do that quickly, you'll have what looks like this. Now I want to show you another method of coin rolling. This time we're going to roll the coins as a block. The middle finger is going to lay across all the chips. These are going to stay together as a solid block. Now you're not just going to simply roll it from one hand to the other because you're just going to get a whole entire block going across. That's not the effect you want to achieve. You want the chips to chase each other across in this format. Now to do that, the trick is this. You're going to apply all the pressure to the front chip and almost none to the back. And then when you do it, it's going to look like this. This is known as the chip spread, 
or sometimes known as the Ferguson spread. The chip spread or Ferguson spread is extremely easy to do. When done flawlessly, it almost looks as if the chips are strung together by some kind of string. Practice tossing your chips forward just a little bit. It's a cool way of demonstrating your chip count. You're going to want to side the chips away from you at about a 45 degree angle. You can use your right hand or left hand. When holding the chips, you're going to hold the bottom with these two fingers, your middle and ring finger, and your thumb, your thumb in the back. And you're going to slide the whole entire stack as a block. I'm using about 10, 10 or 12 chips right now. When you slide forward, slide with the chips being held at the bottom. The top ones are not being held at all. They're going to slide with the bottom chips just through static traction. And you get a nice, even, smooth spread. A lot of times when you spread from the beginning, when you push hard, it's real easy to get kind of a messy spread and one or two chips off by themselves. That's okay. Just try to start off slow and build your way up little by little until you get it down nice and smooth. Now, picking back up the chips is kind of the, ch the secret. I'm using these two fingers. My ring finger and my middle finger is kind of a shovel. As I slide along here, the chips just kind of write themselves all up, kind of like dominoes. When picking the chips up with these two fingers, you know you're doing it right if you go along quickly and the edge of these fingers kind of feel like they're burning a bit on the felt. You kind of develop a touch where you do it pretty effortlessly um, you don't really notice it. But at first, I do remember when I first did it, when digging in, it really does give a little bit of a burn. After doing the chip spread or Ferguson spread, there's an additional cool move you can do. It's called the sweep. After spreading the chips, hold one chip in your finger like this, mostly hanging down, about half the chip exposed below your thumb and first finger. You're going to take this chip kind of like a guitar pick, and you're going to go along the edge of these chips, and it's going to make a little chip noise. When you get to the very last chip, when you go back this direction, this chip is going to make contact with it, and it's going to actually pick all these chips up. I'll show it to you fast, and then I'll show it to you again in slow motion. Slow motion. This is called a bounce stack. This is definitely a field trick. What I mean by that is you have to do it by trial and error and feel the difference between the tables and the weights of chips. It varies a lot. The only thing I could recommend with this is practice bouncing the chip directly straight down and catching it. Believe it or not, when you drop a chip with the absolute slightest angle, it will shoot off in all kinds of funny directions. Dropping a chip perfectly straight down and catching it is the key to your success in this effect. When you drop the chip, you're going to drop it about half of a chip distance away from the stack. I would start off with about eight chips or so. I have at least 12 here. About a half of a chip distance is where you're going to hit, and you're going to tilt this chip when you drop it about five degrees, which is about like that. It's almost nothing. You're not going to throw the chip down either. You're going to literally just, just release. Dropping the chip from this height on that angle will get it to land on top of the chips. If you focus and you hit this exact spot with a slight, slight angle, you can get the chip to go up very high and land on top of a stack of chips. This particular table that I'm using is very, very hard. The softer the table, the much better your height will be. This is a classic chip production. Now this chip production may seem like an easy thing to do, but take it from me, this is probably one of the hardest things you're going to come across on this video. The explanation of this move is very easy, but developing the knack for it is extremely difficult. You're going to simply conceal the coin or the chip in this position. This is a classic palming position done by many magicians. From many angles, you would never know there's a chip in this hand, and all your fingers are free to move. 
the chip literally just rests in the pocket of your first finger and thumb right here, comfortably. This is one of those things where you have to learn your angles. If your hand's too low, you can see it. If your hand's too high, you can see it. So it's just a comfortable angle of visibility from the line of sight of the person you're doing this to. If your fingers are completely around, you're completely fine in all directions. This chip is going to be produced in a really strange way. It's going to appear as if it pops out from just your fingertip. These fingers curl and retrieve that chip. And that chip literally rolls all the way out to the fingertip. You might want to practice this part before moving on to the rest of the effect. This is just some kind of muscle development and memory for your fingers. Once it gets out to here, the work gets really challenging. A lot of this move is time and choreographed between extending the fingers out here with the chip and the flick to achieve this instant appearance of a chip. I'm going to use my other hand to cheat so I can demonstrate what's really going on here. This chip comes out here and I start to throw it up in the air. These hands are no longer holding it. This chip is literally just kind of sitting here by itself. The thumb comes in, grabs the edge, and off this very, very edge of the chip, I actually press very hard to cause it to shoot forward. This actually is happening in midair. This chip for a half a moment is literally suspended. Ignore this hand. This chip is sitting here just like this. So your middle finger brings the chip out. You throw it up in the air just a, a little bit to get the momentum. These chips, these fingers, move out of the way. Your thumb instantly comes in to give this flick right here on this edge to cause it to snap up. And when all done together, the timing looks like this. Now when you first do this effect, I guarantee you you're going to shoot the chip into the air or shoot it forward about four feet. Then you know you're doing it right. So the next time someone raises you 20 bucks, you can say, I'm in. There isn't a cooler way to place your bet. This is called the rich bet. I came up with this effect due to the fact that I do a lot of fake outs when I play poker. For instance, I have a pair of fives and another pair of fives. This is what you need to do. You need to conceal the poker chip, slide it over to your cards. Or just do it in plain sight, it doesn't really matter. But get this chip over here behind your cards, tilt your cards up to take a peek at what they are, and then slide this chip forward. You want this chip to hit the back of these cards about right here. You're also going to, when you lift your cards up to see what they are, you're going to off-jog them quite a bit, which means staggering them where the top card sticks out beyond the bottom card by a good half of a chip distance. You're going to pull these cards forward, and the bottom card is going to snap and hit the table. At that point, you're going to push back forward and then reline up the cards. Once the chip is concealed between the two cards, your hands are going to press on the sides, which causes the cards to bow. When they do that, the chip is actually secured inside the cards. So you're still looking at your cards in this position. You've done all this other work. The chip is concealed. And then when you're going to place your bet, you slide forward, release that bow, tilt up the cards, the chip slides out, and you bring your cards back. So for a moment, it looks as if you're going to put in your cards. And then you go, no, I'll place a bet. Many of the chip tricks in this DVD are very simple. Others require a lot of practice. Either way, you're going to be looking like a pro in no time at all. I'm Rich Ferguson, and until next time, enjoy winning a lot of cash.